Hey guys, welcome back. I'm going to show you how to make a dynamic grid where when you remove certain parts, they will automatically reform to create a dynamic terrain. Let me show you what I mean. So as you can see right now, if I play, nothing special about this. I can't do anything, can't change anything. I've just got one that looks how I want it to look and just another one which is just a square. Now, the only thing that's different about these is the frames that they're set to. The animation speed of this is zero. There's eight frames in total, one which is just a blank square. Then I've got the corners and the top edges and the side edges of the shape that I want the system to automatically build. First thing I'm going to do is go into the event sheet and add an event and say mouse. If you haven't added the mouse, just click and add the mouse. And I'm going to say on object clicked on left click and that object is going to be the block which is the only object I have in the game and then all I want to do when that happens is destroy the block. I'm doing it with a mouse click in your game you may have some form of explosives I don't know where the terrain gets manipulated and you want it to automatically reshape and have a nice edge around it so if I was to click this one away <clears throat> effectively what I want to happen is for this one here to turn into this one and this one here to turn into this one as well because it will create a nice diagonal down. The way that's going to need to work is with the tile movement behavior. So I've gone ahead on the blocks and added the tile movement behavior and I've given it a grid width of 1 on height and width, offset x and y to 0, speed to 0, leave it enabled and then uncheck the, uh, the default and the isometric controls. Now we're going to want to head back into the event sheet and you're going to want to create a system every tick. So every tick, so every moment of the game, we're going to want to keep running checks to see if these blocks have blocks next to them. And if they do, determine which block needs to be in the middle. So for example, if this middle block has a block to the right, the left, the top, and the bottom, we know that that one needs to display frame zero. For example, with the top right, if it has a frame to the left and the bottom, but not a frame to the top or the right, we want it to display frame three. And this is how you do that. Under the event, uh, under the event every tick, push B on the keyboard to create a sub event. Double click, and we're going to go system, and we're going to run a for loop. We're going to run a for each block, which is going to run this every tick for every single block in the game or on the layout. Create another sub event. And now we're going to run the block checks. So we're going to say block. We're going to go down to the tile movement and we want to select can move in direction. And we want to say can move right for a distance of eight. Now we're going to copy that out three more times. Change right to left. Can change right to down and then change right to up. So we've got all four directions covered and I've selected eight because eight is half of the, um, these are 16 by 16 squares. So these are half of the um, width and height of the shape. So if it can move in all of those directions, we need to add another frame to this. We need to add another frame. So I've just duplicated the first frame and what I want to do is add in one of these, which is effectively just a single block. Oh, and that's gone ahead and changed all of my shapes around, but it doesn't matter because they're going to be dynamically formed anyway. So we're going to say if we can move in every direction, we're going to say block and we're going to set the frame to zero. Now we need to copy this block out. What I'd like to do at this point is put in a, a comment just above and I put just for ease of, of uh, reviewing can move in all directions. Then on this one here, I'm going to put a code in and just say can't move in all directions. And we're going to just invert all of these. So now this is going to say if it can't move up, down, left, or right, so it's in the middle, we're going to set the frame to frame one. And remember, frame one is this one. So when we play this now, this one here in particular, well, and this one, both of these middle blocks here should turn into that one without the border. And it doesn't work because we need to add one more behavior to these 
tile grids. We need to add a solid because they bump into solids. Add the solid behavior. And there we go. Now we've got the middle block behaving the way we want it to behave. Now we can go down and copy this block out again. Leave another comment at the top and I'm just going to put can move up. So what we do now is change the up, invert that, and then we need to change it to the up frame, which I believe is frame two. No, frame two is um, up to the left. Up is frame three. So then we go ahead and change that to frame three. And now when we play it, the one at the top is now behaving the way we want it to behave. So you can see it's starting to look pretty good. Let's copy and paste that out again. And now we're going to say, can move right. We reinvert the can move up to no, I can't move up, but I can move to the right. Change it to frame five, I believe. Yes, change it to frame five. And while we're here, I believe seven is down and nine is left. So let's copy that out again. Can move down. Invert right, uninvert down, change it to frame seven, copy the block, can move left, change the frame to nine, and then say it can move left. Now this should start to be looking pretty good. There we go. Now we can see that the up, down, left, right, and center blocks are working. We just need to put in the top ones. And you can see that it's already changing based on what we're doing. We just need those diagonals, which is going to make the whole thing look a lot nicer. So let's copy it down again. And let's just say can move up and right. And now we just simply make those two correct. And up and right is frame four. So we come back here, change it to frame four. Can move down and right. <clears throat> can move down and left. Now, hopefully, if I haven't missed anything, there we go. And now, if I take that one away, that will auto update. If I take that one away, ah, you can see I've got this weird situation here now where we've got a diagonal coming across. So, what I'm going to need to do is add in another frame to account for that. So, if we double click on this, we can go to the end number nine, duplicate that so it's number 10, and we want something that looks a bit like this, just for those end bits. If I duplicate that, rotate it around, because we're gonna want one for every angle. There we go, so we've got 10, 11, 12, and 13, starting from the left. So we go back to the event sheet, we're gonna copy this block out, can move up, left and down, but not right. And that's going to be frame 10. There we go. Let's just check that out, create that same situation again. So if I do that, and then that, there we go. Now it's turned into that. We can just finish this off now by saying can move left and right. So it can't move down. It can move the rest of the way. Copy that out again. Can move up, right, and down. Move left, right, and down. So change that one to up. And these are going to have to be changed to 11, 12, and 13. And that should, there we go, change quite nicely. And you can see they all change as you want them to. So I've just tidied up the outline. I've just made it one um, and I fixed, uh, I've added in a new, <clears throat> a new sprite with just top and bottom um, and left and right on it, uh, which I'll show you on here. It's just frame 14 and 15 because there's a couple missing. And on the event sheet, I've just added them in the same as I've done for the other ones and just changed it to 14 and 15.
before we finish, I'd just like to say a massive thank you and a shout out to my wonderful YouTube Patreons and channel members, Foozle CC, Retro Galaxy, Olivier Bernier, Amari Lewis, Enmark Games, Just Matt, Tor Hammock, Alexanderson, Rob, Martin K, Julian Cruz, Raul Song Gonzalo, 8 Big Gamer, David Wagnerock, and John Allegreza. Thanks so much for the support, guys. You guys are amazing. And for more details about what's on offer on the Patreon, there's a link in the description.